Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200. Stupid. <laughs> this is ridiculous. You make a big freaking deal out of everything, Mom. I cannot I, believe you got so out of control in the store. Well, I mean, you make a big deal. They're a pair of shoes, and everyone's getting them, and you make a big deal. $150 pair of shoes. Well, I told you we weren't I, I, getting Nike 270s. Mom, Mom I told. I told you that I wanted these all summer long, and it's not like you you don't have the money. You've got the money, Mom. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. It's about you listening to me. I cannot believe that you got so out of control about over a stupid pair of shoes. you're being a jerk. Oh, what are you doing? Put that phone down. Put that phone down. I'm going to show you exactly all my friends, exactly what you You look like. You are acting like a a, a toddler. No. This is ridiculous. You're acting like a toddler. Just give me the shoes, and it's not a big deal. Stop throwing your little temper tantrums. I, I'm not throwing a tantrum. Why are you yelling? I just want the shoes. I oh, want the I'm shoes. I'm done. I'm done. We're going home. We're going home. I, I, I'm, I, I want need to talk the to shoes. Dad. No. Well, I am. Yeah, Mom, I'm getting the shoes. I'll talk to Dad, and okay, Dad will get okay. me the shoes. Get your stupid shoes. I don't care. Buy those Nike 270s. 150 good. bucks. That's... I don't care. 150 bucks to get you off my back would be worth it. Okay. Good. All, right, All right. Let's go. Let's, good. Uh, good. Let's go. We're good. going home. All right. Woo! Did you see that, Linda? Ooh. You are mean. You were out of control. You are mean. That wasn't me. That was your son. <laughs> the hairy legs the- gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Rock Solid Radio. Mm. Hey, this is Merle and Linda Hutchinson coming to you. And how about that little tantrum? Oh, my that goodness. That little crybaby argument. You know, that was, was one take, and you were like, whoa. You you, you know, were coming heavy. I think it's because it's from experience. <laughs> I've had those before. You're not supposed to practice bad thing <laughs> i think uh, i've been in that situation more oh. than once. so hey welcome mm. to rock solid radio and today uh linda and i are going through our toolbox series mm-hmm. using the tools in your toolbox and specifically today we are going after the tantrum mm. okay the tantrum and we really want to take this tantrum conversation from the time of little kids yeah. okay toddlers up until what you saw there <laughs> you know hairy leg 15 year old <laughs> Okay. By the way, if you're listening and you have a toddler and you were listening to this thinking that this was about toddler tantrums, you may not want to have children in the teenage years after you see that. Like, send send them to boarding school. If that's what I'm about ready to head to, forget it. I'm not interested. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we're going to uh, get mm-hmm. right into the business just so that we can keep things moving. So you saw that video. Um, there are a couple of things right mm-hmm. off the bat that uh, that Linda and I want to address, okay? First off, understand what is going on with a tantrum, mm-hmm. all right? So right off the bat, uh, what are we going to call me in that? Um, a brat? Little, little brat. <laughs> little brat, 15-year-old. He comes in, <clears throat> and right away, he makes the first statement. He mm-hmm. makes this statement about, this is stupid. I don't like this. You know, mm-hmm. like all of a sudden... He has been treated unfairly. What yep. does he want? He wants to be the victim. Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. And, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about tantrums, and we understand that you're listening to this with a whole variety of age in your mind and in your experiences. And so tantrums are a natural part of development. That is how our child is having to find how to express and then manage his emotions. And so this starts after the age of one. And so it, it that's where you get the terrible twos from because they're starting to understand that, their emotions can push buttons and get their way. And so this is a really natural thing. Our kids are going to do it. So don't think that you've got this terrible manipulator in your home. You've Mm -hmm. just got a child. And that's part of childhood development. It's the key of how parents handle the tantrums Mm. and respond to them. That's key. And so part of what we're going to tell you is that 15-year-old tantrum is a result from parents who did not deal with that when they were two and three. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually not a kid problem, even Mm. though it appears that the kid is being a problem. This is a parenting problem. 
but we're not going to spend a lot of time beating ourselves up no. over this. I don't care if your kid is 15 or 16. There are ways to move through this and mm-hmm. to come out better on the other side. So yeah. don't throw your hands up and get into this whole, you know, well, I, I screwed this up. Uh, yeah. We all have at some level screwed this up at different times because emotions are powerful and they get in the way. Yeah. And I want to put a disclaimer here right now because I know there are some parents who are dealing with some strong mental illness with their children. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a teenager a young adult or a toddler that, but I I have a feeling that a lot of kids have been misdiagnosed and that there is not as many bipolar children out there or ADHD children out there than there are children who have just had a hard time with parenting regulation and learning this idea of self-regulating emotions in a healthy way at home. Right. And again, as Linda said, a little disclaimer there, you know, over the years, I worked with many, many kids and moms and dads in the school setting. And uh, it wasn't unusual when because Mm -hmm. you're going to see the doctor and you're just presenting the problem to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor then starts to search to try to help you. And one of the things that often comes up is, you know, well, they are ODD, Mm -hmm. okay, oppositional defiant disorder. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, all right. That doesn't really, that's like telling your kid, telling a parent that their kid's autistic. Okay. So how do we deal with it? Right. 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 How do we deal with it? Whether the, you have a diagnosis or not, you right, still have to right. manage and parent them. Yeah. At the end of the day, we have to get this child and mm-hmm. uh, eventually young adult into a functioning world. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. that's really, uh, don't get all bogged down by any label. Mm-hmm. Let's get into the practice of uh, how can we start this right early? And if, mm-hmm. if we're in the middle of it in hmm. the stream, then what can we do in the middle? Yeah. And okay. we're, again, we're not here to beat you up or condemn you or judge you because we've been there <laughs> parenting yep. five children. And the last three, we, we, entered into our home and they were 11, 10, and 7. And so they had not been taught a lot of this self-regulation of emotions at a younger age. And so we felt like we were starting all over and we couldn't understand why it was so hard. But the older we get, when we start to do this, the older they are, the harder it is. And so, you know, it's kind of like trying to teach an old dog new tricks. You Mm -hmm. know, it's hard when they get older. So if you're a young parent, I'm so glad you're listening because now's the time Mm -hmm. when their children are young. Okay, so l- <clears throat> let's break down some of the video here, okay? Uh. Let's break down a little bit of the video, and I'm going to play the first part of this video and just so that you can kind of see it, and then we're mm-hmm. going to come back and we'll, we'll touch on that, okay? So uh, just go ahead and take a listen. <coughs> freaking stupid. <sighs> this is ridiculous. You make a big freaking deal out of everything, Mom. I cannot I- believe you got so out of control in the store. Well, I mean, you make a big deal. They're a pair of shoes, and everyone's getting them, and you make a big deal. $150 pair of shoes? Well, I told you we weren't getting Nike 270s. Mom, Mom, I told... I told you that I wanted these all summer long, and it's not like you you don't have the money. You've got the money, Mom. It's not about the money. It's not about the money. Uh, It's about you listening to me. I cannot believe that you got so out of control about over a stupid pair of shoes. you're being a jerk. Oh. All right. Oh, uh, I lost it there. <laughs> By the way, we filmed this in our neighborhood, and we were looking for our neighbors. Yeah. Like, we were a little worried. They're going to think we are. If you look <laughs> off to the side, you might see that our neighbor is a sh- sheriff, and uh, you see his car. We were hoping he wasn't going to come flying out oh, with one of his guns. Domestic ablazing. violence, this situation. Yeah. But no. Yeah. So, all right. So, right off the bat, let's take a look at this. All right. Um, I'm a teenager, I have one thing in mind, Mm. and it's me. My shoes. Yeah. Right. It's about me. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, I'm going to try to suck mom Mm. or dad or whoever I can right into my frame. That's why I'm right away trying to convince with how illogical and wrong mom is. Mm. This is ridiculous. I even come in, notice I use some force. I said, and I didn't use the total F word, but I, uh, in some homes we've actually seen that. Mm, okay. Oh yeah. But, but I went, Parents this is freaking stupid. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm, if, if that's not my mm-hmm. regular sort of way, I am trying mm-hmm. to drive some strength. I'm being assertive yep. as a 15 year old. Yep. Okay. And mm-hmm. now I have engaged my mm. mom into a fight. Yep. Now, just think about this. When I engaged her, I've already got part of the win. 
Mm-hmm. I've got part of the win because she's stepped into the ring with me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now I at least have a chance to get my way. Yeah. And you've definitely, I have just been thrown into it hook, line, and sinker. And I have actually um, got engaged in that. And there must have been some kind of um, display in the store that was embarrassing to me. Mm-hmm. And that just pushed my buttons. You heard the door slam. You heard me yelling. I have just literally showed my son how to not control my emotions. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we do as parents. When we get our buttons pushed, which, by the way, that's no excuse for us not being in control. That's right. And, and that's what we do. We say, you made me mad. You pushed my buttons. And as parents, we got to show them, I'm going to model for you how to mm-hmm. stay in control. And I didn't do that in that video. Yeah, yeah. So, so then, you know, it starts to happen. Then everybody starts to up their game, mm. right? So now I've got mom to step into the ring. All right. And we, yes. we're both throwing I'm a few punches. It. All right. But neither of us are going to just, okay, mm-hmm. well, all right, mm-hmm. whatever you want. All right. And so we're going to go into the battle. All right. So now I want you to see what a typical teenager tries to do mm. when they feel like their back is starting to be pushed up against yep. the wall. Okay. So I, I want to break here for a second. Watch the second part of this video mm. and see what happens. See what we both end up doing here. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and check this out. What jerk, are you Mom. doing? Put that I'm phone down. Put that phone I'm down. I'm going to show you exactly who all my I'm, friends. I'm headed. Exactly what you, you look like. You are acting like a, t- a, a toddler. No. This I, is ridiculous. You're acting like a toddler. Just get me the shoes and it's not a big deal. Stop throwing your little temper tantrums. I, I'm not throwing a tantrum. Why are you yelling? I just want the shoes. Oh, I want the I'm shoes. I'm done. I'm done. We're going home. We're going home. I, I, I'm, I, I, I want need to talk the to shoes. Dad. No. Well. I, yeah, Mom, I'm getting the shoes. I'll talk to Dad. Oof. <laughs> You know, I saw veins popping so up out of your I'm just going to say, our, our teachers, coaches, parents, we are in a world that we did not grow up with. We didn't have that intimidating factor of whipping out the phone and recording everybody and going to document it with pictures and videos. And, and, and that's the world we're living in. And our kiddos are trying to manipulate and intimidate through their technology. Mm-hmm. And we as parents cannot fall for it. I totally felt violated. I felt like I was kind of being recorded. I even pushed it away. And that's something that a lot of our kids are using as kind of that strong arming us to get what they want. Yeah, absolutely. This is, um, I will call 241 kids. I'll call the authorities. Don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. I know the law. You Mm -hmm. can't do that. And so these are all things. I I, I am going to show all my friends this. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to try to just like we do on social media. We're going to publicly mm-hmm. humiliate. So I am dropping the hammer of manipulation as a teenager yeah, onto my parent, all for one reason, What me. I want. But I will say, if you were in control, there would have been nothing to record. Yeah. So the fact that you're out of control and maybe you are laying a hand on them or you are intimidating them, they, they feel violated. And so you just got to stay in control. Maybe you got to give yourself a time out. There would have been better use of your lack of words and driving home in silence mm-hmm. than feeding that fire of that out of control teenager. If you notice the teenager started to talk less than mom did. He knew that he had mom mm-hmm. on fire. Mm-hmm. And so he he went back and stuck to his guns. I don't care what you say. I'm mm. getting the shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And now mom mm. is ranting and raving. Okay. <clears throat> I've got her all escalated. Oh, I'm flustered. Yes. <laughs> and, and to the point where <clears throat> I can just kind of watch her smoke herself out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have to budge. I just have to let yeah. her escalate herself. Yeah. And he knows, he knows I'm about to blow. Something's going to happen. So okay. he's either going to get me on video or he's going to get his way. Right. And let's okay. see what he does. Let, let's go catch the last part of this. Mm. What a brat he is. And okay, Dad, get okay. The shoes. Get your stupid shoes. I don't care. Buy those Nike 270s. 150 good. bucks, That's... I don't care. 150 bucks to get you off my back would be worth it, okay? Good. All, right, All right, let's go. Let's, good. Uh, good. Let's go. We're good. going home. All right. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Mm-hmm. beautiful children. So it either could have gotten one way ugly where I would have done something so detrimental that I could have gotten arrested, <laughs> like ripped his tongue out of his mouth, or I gave in. Yeah. And what did I do? So, but, but before we did that, like we were still 
upping the ante mm-hmm. of the fight. Now we are starting to do something that we see all the time, and this even goes to a higher level mm-hmm. in divorce homes. Oh, yeah. We're going to pull in outer forces to continue to build our army. Yeah. M- Mom says, I'm taking this to dad. The son mm. goes, I'll take it to dad, and mm. dad will agree with me. Uh, dad yeah. will see my side, uh. okay? And so whatever's going on inside of mom's mind, now she knows that this is starting to get bigger mm. and you get more and more frustrated. And yeah. then what do you do? I give in. And she I let gives you have the in. stupid shoes so you get off my back. This is, <laughs> yeah. She said, if that will mm. quiet you down, if that'll yeah. shut you up, if that'll take this argument away, yeah. I'll get you the stupid shoes. Oh, and I can't tell you how many parents tell me that. It's not worth it. I just, I give them what they want so yeah. that, that we're done. Yeah. And let me tell you, the reason why that happens when, when we're 15 is because that has been our habit since they were three. Yeah. All right. And so hear me, hear me on this. All right. Mm-hmm. We hear stuff all the time. Like, you know, it's just their hair. We're not going to argue mm-hmm. about their hair. It's just their clothes. We're not going to argue about their clothes. It's not the, the hair and the clothes Mm-mm. and the shoes. It's not that. Okay. It's about values. Yeah. It's about respect. It's about teaching your kids what virtue is. And so that has to start young. Yeah. And it doesn't start with an argument. So, hon, let's let's get into helping yeah. mom and dad here in this situation with a little bit more of a, yeah. okay, here's what we can do better. Yeah. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to get into really some practical things. You know, I would write these down because I'm sure that you've dealt with a tantrum or two. And again, it can be a two-year-old. It can be a 10-year-old. It could be a 20-year-old. I mean, I have some adult parents coming in, you do too, mm-hmm. that have 20, 30, 40 year old kids who are still throwing tantrums. Yep. And it's because it's never been dealt with when they were three. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first one is you've got to model the behavior that you want out of your kids. You can't give them something you are not expressing or doing yourself. And so you got to stay calm. Less mm-hmm. words, the better. And I did not do that in that no, video. At one point, you said, Why are you arguing with me as <laughs> you were you yelling, yelling at me? And it was, it was like, Oh, well, it seems to be the yeah. way we're playing playing this game. Yeah. And so as a teacher, I remember having nightmares of my teenagers yelling and screaming and then me yelling and screaming and no one's listening to me. I mean, I would have nightmares about that. And I realized that the less words, the better. The calmer that I can be, the better off the situation's going to be. Mm-hmm. It's almost like that old commercial, that deodorant commercial that you never let them see you sweat. <laughs> and yeah. and that's the key. You, you cannot show your teenage boy that you have he has you rattled. Yeah. Because you lose it. When I worked at the schools... Um, um, I worked a lot with our bus drivers <clears throat> on daily transportation, <laughs> and um, I you start to get more referrals from one particular bus, you know, all the time or a particular buses, and you quickly find out that you know, yeah, they might have some rambunctious kids on there, <clears throat> but typically <clears throat> you find out that the bus driver engages in arguments with the kids Oh yeah, because they get into that. Well, that kid just said that to me, I'm bringing it right back and I'm, I'm, and they start escalating and you might be able to start to intimidate a kindergartner, but by the time they're in mm-hmm. middle school and high school, listen, they, they know where they can stand with you. Oh, yeah. And so my and first job, yeah, <laughs> my first job with these bus drivers is close your mouth, mm. stop the arguing, Engaging with it, them. it doesn't mean you give in. It means right. you stop the engagement. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that is our very first yeah. takeaway right here that we stop the engagement. Mm-hmm. All right. A part of this, I'm only going to stop the engagement if I'm confident mm. in what we believe in here. In That's other so words, big, the rule is the rule. Yeah. You can yell and scream about it all day long. Right. But the rule is a rule. And so I'm not going to engage. No. I'm going to go and take care of my things. And mm-hmm. the child can go look at the wall and yell at the wall for the yeah. next hour because I'm not going to engage. Hun, and that is so huge. As parents, we have to have confidence that God has equipped us and prepared us for what's going to come our way. And, and when we show that we are weak, they smell blood in the water. And so you've got to have that confidence and establish that authority, not in a authoritative, no, authoritarian, authoritarian. way, mm-hmm. in a like a 
you know, just hammering down on them, but in a loving but firm way, confident that who you are as a parent. And and you set that stage up on, especially mm. as they're young, on a daily, yes. regular basis. Not just basis. in the argument. Right. So, you know, in our house, we respect each other. In yep. our house, this is how we address each other. In yep. our house, when we have a problem or a challenge, mm-hmm. these are the, the tools that we use. No different than when a country establishes a country, mm-hmm. you have law mechanisms, court systems that you proceed through. Mm. When you don't have those set up, you get this crazy thing called riots and anarchy, okay? Mm. And that's what we see so much. That basically was a little riot inside that <laughs> car, okay? Law control. And, and it's because law was never established. Yeah, that's perfect, hun. Perfect segue to our next tool, and that is rules without relationship equal rebellion. Mm-hmm. Rules without relationship equal rebellion. If all you're doing to, with your kids are these fights and these tantrums and these battles, then you're, you're going to stay in that. So you need to create a positive environment where you're building a relationship with your kids, that you're catching them in the good, that you are complimenting them and noticing when they do the things that they, you want them to do so that they trust that you see the good in them, not just everything they do wrong. Right. That's key. Yeah. So, so I like to talk about that, hun, with know what lane that you're driving mm-hmm. in. Okay. So when you're, it is time to discipline, you don't cloud that with warm and fuzzies. Mm-hmm. When it's time Mm-hmm. the discipline you stay firm mm-hmm. and you do the discipline yep. when the discipline's over it's over you don't yep. continue to spit it oh. back in their face you don't continue yeah like well remember mm-hmm. what you did yesterday no mm-hmm. okay that's like hanging an anchor around their neck and mm-hmm. eventually they say i can never yeah. do anything right okay right. But on the other hand, when it's finished, that's when we enjoy our kids. That's when that's when we do have to celebrate mm-hmm. them, and that's when we do praise them. Listen, at, at Rock Solid Families, we're all about the carrot and the stick, but you can't <laughs> mix the two together at the same time. Yeah. You you can't praise your kid while you're beating them. Yeah. Okay, and I and you I can't yell at them and give them their sho- and you can't yell at them and then give them their shoes. So it's yeah. really confusing, and that's a huge part of that, hun. Is that you're very you're, you're confusing your children when you say no, 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 and then yes. Okay. When because, you scream, no, no, yes. No. And when mm-hmm. you're like, no way. And then if they say it long enough or yell at you or manipulate you or intimidate you, then they get it. It's very confusing and it creates a very insecure environment for our kids. I don't care if they're three or 23. They've got to see consistent. They got to trust your word that it means something. Mm-hmm. Man, we have had to <laughs> hold the line on some stupid things because we knew it's a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. And if we gave in on this stupid thing, then it was gonna be Katie bar the door for everything. And right. we just can't do that. Yeah, yeah, and so it's a, it's a matter of being that consistent parent, mm-hmm. that not wavering in terms of getting letting mm-hmm. the emotions get in. But hun, I think it's also very important that not only do we teach parents to recognize their emotions. Mm -hmm. So like when I recognize my emotions, I know it's time for me to say, I need a break. Mm -hmm. To because I will keep escalating and do and say things that I wish I didn't do. Okay. But I also need, and this happens at a very young age, teach your kids when they're getting emotionally charged. Okay. When the when the three year old is throwing a tantrum yelling at them with emotion you need to stop that i'll give you something to cry about these kind of phrases no instead say listen i know you are all upset right yep. now yep. let's sit down in this chair let's <laughs> go like, to this room <laughs> yeah. yeah and and l- let's take some deep breaths and let's calm down yeah. and at that yeah. point you 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 disengage to you typically, if you keep engaging and trying mm. to convince them to calm down, you, you are just putting fuel on the fire. Yeah. You have to teach them to do this on their own, all right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you say, I'll be right over here. I'll be in the yeah. kitchen or I'll be in this room. When you calm down, yeah. we can talk. And that is so huge. So when that tantrum turns into a meltdown and there is no, I mean, there's so much sensory overload, they cannot handle one more thing. They're not hearing a word you're saying. You have got to give them a place and a time to calm down. And if you don't do this when they're three and four, they're going to be 16, 17 years old. And that's when we see the police being called yep. because they're literally getting physical with mom and dad or they're they're threatening to hurt themselves or someone else. Like that's when we see those meltdowns that get violent or dangerous. Mm-hmm. And we've got to take care of that way ahead of time. And, and if it's already gotten to that point, then maybe you need some outside help that helps you get those things under control so that you don't have it escalate to that ugly place. Yeah. 
yeah. So, honey, when you talk about um, the consistency part, so it's mm-hmm. not just the consistency in my demeanor, mm-hmm. but it is also the consistency that my kids can trust me. Yeah. And that means both on the good and the bad. Like when I say, no, um, you know, you're not going to get this, that I don't waver on that. Mm-hmm. But it also means that if I say, hey, I'm going to come pick you up at this time or we're going right. to go out to see this movie, that I stick through it with that because mm-hmm. there's a fabric of trust that kids are constantly building. Yeah. It's even in our marriage. Mm-hmm. If as spouses, if I say one thing and I constantly contradict it with my actions, yeah. we start to have doubt. Yeah. And when there's doubt, there's uncertainty. And yeah. uncertainty creates mm-hmm. that fracture where we start to, well, maybe I will get into this argument or try yeah. to manipulate. Man, hon, I can't tell you how many students that we've had. I have the girls, you have the boys who their parents would come in and say, oh my gosh, help fix my child. They have depression or anxiety or, you know, suicide thoughts. And then we kind of dig a little deeper and kind of peel back the onion. And there's so much chaos going on in the home. Mm-hmm. There's so much uncertainty with parenting that it's created this really unhealthy, unstable, scary place for our kiddos, whether they're 10 or 15, Mm -hmm. they don't feel safe. And that comes on us. We have to keep our promises. We have to be somebody that's trustworthy and that our word means something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's perfect stuff, Hannah, because I think it's that security. And when kids don't have that, they Mm -hmm. become hardened and they become tough. And remember, selfishness is also a way of Mm self-survival so when i finally feel like i listen it's on my own to get these shoes of mine i'm going to fight to the bitter end then i'm going to get ugly i'm going to fight to the bitter end versus if we can start to trust each other and we can know that we have each other's uh, best interest in mind we'll get a lot farther you know when we when our kiddos came into our home like i said they were 10 11 and 7 and they had not seen this modeled and so we really had to start from ground zero Mm -hmm. we really had to start with really simple things Things. And it was establishing a relationship and being people they can trust in and that this was a safe place and that our words do mean something and that we mean what we say and we say what we mean. They hadn't grown up with that. Mm-hmm. And so it was really chaotic in their world. And so it took some time. So the older your kiddos are and the less they've seen of that, the more, the longer it's going to take to establish that, that it, they can rest in knowing that you're there and that your words matter. Right. So that means your words matter because they're predictable. Yes. So that means in advance. Mm-hmm. And and hun, mm-hmm. you you did lay out in that little argument that uh, that Brad of yours had with you mm-hmm. in that video. <laughs> that Brad of mine. That Brad of yours. Whatever you want to call him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you did say I told you. I told you we weren't. We getting weren't them. going to. Mm-hmm. But why did I engage? Mm-hmm. Because I've seen her buckle before. Yep. Okay. And so early on, the consistency is you do state when you're out in that parking lot or before Mm -hmm. you even leave the home, you say, Hey, you know what? Like in in our home, we say, Hey, uh, we will pay $50 towards your shoes. If you want something Mm -hmm. more awesome, Mm -hmm. but you'll have to make up the difference. So we would not say no to the, the Nike, what are they, 270s or whatever they are? <laughs> I had okay. to tell you that like three I know, times. Like, I was afraid I was going to say 480s or something, and everybody would go, he's such an idiot. He oh, isn't. my gosh. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you say up front, listen, if you want those, okay, yeah. that's fine, but here's my limit. Right. And, and, and you just stick to that, and it also yeah. then totally takes you out of the emotional game because yeah. now the challenge becomes theirs. Like, okay, do I need to save the money? Do I yeah. have the money? Okay, I guess. And it, it really just makes things so much easier if even one time, like mm. let's say the year before, I mm. said, okay, this one time I'll get you these expensive shoes. Mm. You can't blame them for coming back the next year. Again. I mean, why not? Because yeah. again, this your kid is not bad. Yeah. Your kid is operating in a system that works best yep. for them in that moment. Yeah, so give them choices. Another tool is to give them choices whenever possible so they feel like they're in control. We have teenagers now living in our home. They want Nike 270s. The rule is we pay the 50 bucks toward the shoes. And so they are 150 bucks. And the kids knew that going into school shopping, that that's how much that we were going to pay toward that. But you know, our daughter, she saved her money and she wanted those Nike 270s. And there was no tantrum. There was no arguing because she knew where we stood. And we gave her that choice of, hey, if you want those shoes, we're not saying you can't. There's nothing wrong with those shoes. It's just that we don't feel like it's got a value of $150. So she thought they were. Right. 
Another thing, hon, I do want to touch on a little bit, like mm. um, setting out your expectation, not just on the things, but on the values. Mm -hmm. Like I was very disrespectful mm. toward, or, or that kid that you were arguing with was very disrespectful. <laughs> whoever that was. Whoever that was, was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. That only happened because it was, there was never a clear expectation on how we should engage yeah, how we and typically it's it really actually goes both ways kids are disrespectful because parents can be disrespectful back to kids because that's where we get into that yep. little word match and we've let them yeah and we've let them and so that disrespect i need to lay out in advance when they're three when they're four mm -hmm. you know you say please and thank you mm -hmm. you apologize when you're talking to me this mm -hmm. is how i am asking you to do it you're setting that stage early yeah. but you're also also doing that with them you can't be a nasty person to them mm. and expect that at some point in time that's not going to come back around yeah. and, and I have been guilty with this mm -hmm. like sarcasm we've talked about this in other shows we, we mm. like to be funny and silly and we'll run sarcasm and so our youngest son and I we like to banter back and forth with some <laughs> things and then all of a sudden when emotions are going it comes back and bites me and mm -hmm. I'm like you know what I got to tell you right now mm -hmm. that's not how we're going to operate I, I am sorry, but that's not how we roll right here. Mm -hmm. And and so I find like, oh, you know, I have to really watch that. Right. And you have to own it. So there's apologies in there where you have to acknowledge that, hey, I lost it. So in that next conversation that you're not going to see with my son, I'm going to say, hey, I'm sorry that I got out of control in that car. But you need to understand that that's not how we roll and that's not how we're going to interact. And so I got to own my part. I got to own the fact that I lost it. And mm -hmm. I, I want to do better next time. And trust me, I have had those conversations mm -hmm. and I have lost it. And it's because I felt backed up to in the corner and I, I didn't have the tools and I wasn't prepared on how to respond. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing mm -hmm. that's really important, not always in the storm, it depends. OK, but we like to use humor. Mm -hmm. Right. We like to use humor, um, <clears throat> especially after the fact when you can kind of laugh at some of the silliness mm -hmm. and get your kid to see like, you know, wow, not that. that <laughs> yeah. That we are right or wrong as much as like, did you see where we were, what we were valuing in that? Mm -hmm. And to kind of say, yeah, that, that was kind of silly. Yeah. I don't need to do that. OK. Um, so learning how to use distractions with little ones is mm -hmm. especially important. Even when I was working all the way through the elementary school, when we would have a kindergarten or first grader, even second grader, um, that would be starting to lose it. Distraction is key and because mm -hmm. once they start drilling down into that little funnel of energy of what they want or need or perceive is, mm -hmm. is important, it's hard for them to see something else. But if, I mean, it's simple things. Sometimes I'd say, let's just go for a walk. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, for you go for or a walk a and, and a squirrel's a running yeah. out on the playground. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're talking about a squirrel on the playground mm -hmm. and the kid's like ready to go back to class. Right. Those are effective ways to pull the emotion down. Yeah, it's so cool hun to see our kiddos now who who threw some tamper tantrums when they were in our home originally now they are the greatest distractors for little or kids they are great they are with little awesome kids. little kids because they get it they know yeah. that that's not appropriate and that there can be redirection and there can be self-regulation and they're going to teach these little ones and so they are awesome with little kids are their their nieces and nephews it's so cute to see them now yeah so a couple of things as we start to wind this down mm -hmm. we don't give in to tantrums oh uh, please okay? don't you don't give in to tantrums. But hear this. But that does not mean we argue. We do not argue. Mm. Right? We do not argue. In other words, you're, I'm not saying you don't give in to what they want. All right? I'm saying you don't go down to the tantrum. You don't give them what they want by just being secure in mm -hmm. what you've laid out. So I'm not... Linda would have been better off had I jumped in the car and act like a baby mm -hmm. and, and fumed over why I didn't get what I wanted. And she just put it in drive and just went yeah. down the road. Disengaged and just completely. Because that way I got no one to argue with. Mm. I know there's <clears throat> no budging. She gave me a little bit of room. Oh, and did. once she gave it, <laughs> I was ready to go, okay? Yeah. So she would have been better off to just let it roll. And not even, and, and her never bending on yep. on the shoe situation, okay? And that would have kept me realizing, oh, yeah. I guess I know where I stand here. Yeah, okay. and it's hard when you're driving in a car, and I'm sure that people are listening that have had this, we're like, oh crud, I've got a half an hour drive from the store to the house. And so what am I gonna do? I've gotta be in this car with this kid who's driving me crazy. And there's two different ways. One, you disengage, okay? You don't feed that fire at all. Or you can even throw water on it. 
and just literally say, I'm not talking to you about this. We'll talk about it when we get home. Mm-hmm. And you almost, especially the older they are, the more delayed that conversation can be because they're going to be thinking about that. Now, a little toddler, they're going to forget by the time they get home. And so that's going to be a harder thing. That's got to be more immediate. But the older they are, man, you can even say tomorrow when dad gets in town, you and I and dad are going to sit down. Like you can just tell them we're going to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and when you talk to them, you don't talk first about the shoes. You talk about what value you mm-hmm. were holding to in your home. Remember, son, in our home, our value is more important than your shoe. Mm-hmm. So this was the value I'm protecting and I will continue to protect. Now yeah. let's go back to those shoes. <laughs> so you want the shoes. Let's talk about a peaceful way that we could go about you getting your shoes yep. and still upholding the values that we believe in as a family. Yeah. There is a way to get those shoes. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be maybe different than what right. you thought. And so we always want our kids, at the end of the day, I, the sooner my kids know what values we stand for, yeah. the, the faster we can get into having other problem-solving missions that we go on, okay, yeah. that we can, we can take on the challenges of life. Yeah. So we, we always talk about the idea of, um, you know, you hear that negotiation that Linda kind of, I, I basically broke her in a negotiation, okay? <laughs> or that kid, that kid that she yeah. was arguing with. <laughs> and so that whole idea is you never argue with a kid that you don't trust their value system. And please hear that, all right? You don't, you don't get into that engagement. I wouldn't do that. We're thinking about buying a car. If I don't trust the value system of the salesperson I'm working with, if I don't believe that they have my best interest at heart, then I have no problem going, you know, we're going to look for a different dealer. Hang on. Did you say we're going to buy a car? I, I said we're in the okay, market. That's on the <laughs> honey. That's on tape. What's our value system here? <laughs> but no, you're right, hon. And I believe that it's important for our kiddos to actually kind of process that together with you and maybe even speak out what they see was the problem, you know, for to, to calm down and then to sit with that 15 year old and say, so what happened? Why did that go south? Yeah. Because I threw a fit and I embarrassed you in public and because I yelled and I was nasty and I cussed it out. And, and, you know, you had told me we weren't buying these and like, let them speak that mm-hmm. so that they can help start to self-regulate and be self-aware of what's going wrong and how to get what I want. And that's where we start to really see some emotional maturity in our kiddos. We're not seeing that right now in our families. So therefore they're going out into the world and they're throwing these little temper tantrums as adults. It's because they've never had it regulated or called out as a child. Right. And, and then, you know, everyone, all the adults are running around complaining about all of these <clears throat> entitled um, young workers. And it's like, well, th- don't blame them. Mm. This is from our parenting. lack of parenting and understanding. Mm-hmm. You got to build a value system into your family first, and then that will be reflected out in terms of how your kids approach life and, and the, the things younger- they want the sooner the better it doesn't start at 15 all right Mm -hmm. it starts at two and three and when you're starting to work them around the house so Mm -hmm. um good stuff hopefully you find that we could be here all day (laughs) yeah lots of good stuff there we are not experts that Mm. in the sense that we do it right every time because emotion always is the wild card but when i know how to take the wild card and play it at the right time so that's why i learned to handle my emotions i step back i think about it Mm -hmm. man we can just get so much farther um, as we proceed in the parenting process. So, yeah. By the way, this episode is just one of the many in our toolbox series, the Rock Solid Toolbox. And so if you've just landed on this one, go back. Last week, it was all about... You don't remember now. I do. It was as a couple. <laughs> so a little nagging, a little it nagging was... spouse. I think I was the nagger. And so I would love for you to go back. It's almost like an adult temper tantrum, you know? Yeah, it's, it's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, please check back. We also have another weekly podcast called Strong Dads that you and Kyle Crawford do all about dads. So I would really encourage you. There's You just celebrate your two-year we anniversary. We did. Just did two years. Yeah. The, the Strong Dads. So there's a huge lot library there of resources so we're just so thankful for that and and hopefully you can tap into that and then share it because you know after all you are not alone as a parent we are in the trenches with you Mm -hmm. you know being parents of five kids and four grandchildren we see it all and and you know we know that we're not perfect either and we need each other so if you are struggling with an issue in your parenting and with your children and need some help reach out 
you, there's there's help available for you. Yeah, we also want to thank uh, Casey's Outdoor Solutions mm-hmm. and Maxwell Construction for coming alongside of Rock Solid Radio, continuing to support us, being such great contributors to uh, what we believe is a very strong and, and good, healthy uh, neighborhood area that we get to live in. And so mm-hmm. these guys and, and many, many other people believe in family, believe in marriages, and we just want to thank them for that. Yeah, so thanks again for listening to Rock Solid Radio, building a stronger community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. You were a brat. That was pretty natural. That was the scary part. <laughs> Me too. It was a little <laughs> too natural there. Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana.